Well, let's bring in Robert Gucci. He's an associate professor at Lancaster University and also a specialist in U.S. foreign policy. He joins us now from Lancaster. Uh, Robert, I want to start with the reaction we saw at home in the U.S. because that felt like it became very reflective of its approach to foreign policy. A, a moment of emergency allows various groups and ideas, really, to make themselves seem very necessary. So how do you think 9-11 changed the way that the U.S. saw the world and cultures that were perhaps considered less American, less Western? Well, and I hate to, you know, reiterate anything from the reporting that I think just really uh, hit the nail on the head uh, just now. But as uh, a local reporter at the time in 9-11 um, in the Midwest uh, of the United States, um, I, I've seen a lot of, uh, I saw a lot of that immediate domestic response uh, of hypermilitarization of police, uh, uh, which seeped into churches, into classrooms, and really began to foster, I think, uh, a baseline for where we are today in domestic politics. And, it, and, and that has a direct influence into the national uh, and international uh, responses that the United States leads in terms of fears and moral panics related to Muslims. Uh, fueling Islamophobia and into negotiations with its friends and neighbors across the world and how to respond to Western and American interests, both economically mm -hmm. and militarily. So the, the things that have happened um, over the 20 years domestically on American soil in terms of uh, the response has a direct impact into the narratives of popular culture uh, uh, that spread across the world and politics. Well, narratives are so important. As Rob was mentioning in his report there, we saw this enormous rise globally of a surveillance state that also roped in other various governments. I mean, many would also argue that the global war on terror has provided additional moral justification for rendition, torture, extrajudicial detention. And, and I think that that's absolutely right. And I think that we have those generations now, um, uh, students I teach, who, who are um, in the middle of this normalization process that still is continuing. Uh, uh, and, it's, and it's not that we look back to pre-9-11 with nostalgia as though things were perfectly fine, but certainly it has become a lot more dystopian than any of us could have even uh, imagined. Those, those of us who were imagining, us, uh, imagining it might have been a little unpopular in those days. Um, following the immediacy of 9/11, but um, we have we have a generation now of people who um, are tracking their children when they go off to school, who are uh, hacking into each other's social media, and who are seeing this um, portrayal of themselves as American or otherwise as as a commonplace for the way that they uh, see their own future. And I think that the effects of uh, the response to 9/11. Uh, over the 20 years um, are going to have uh, ramifications for hundreds of years going forward as we indoctrinate people to what the norm is now. Mm. Uh, you talked there also about militarization. I see the U.S. defense budget doubled between 2001 and 2008. But I was also struck looking at foreign aid that that also more than doubled over the same period. How did 9-11 change the non-military side of, of U.S. intervention abroad? Yeah, well, I mean, I think part of this is you fall in line with the United States government if you want aid and if you want uh, assistance and if you want to be on the good side of policymaking internationally. Uh, certainly, you, it, it's very difficult to take money that is that is um, for a natural disaster or for a health crisis, for instance, and then come back and say, uh, well, we don't agree with your foreign policy. And, and, and that's because domestically in the United States, that's the way it works. That's how seatbelt laws, for instance, a very normal thing got passed was, if you want federal aid for your highways, you will require that citizens wear seatbelts, whether that's good or bad. And that same sort of mentality is applied internationally. Uh, if, if you want um, assistance, then you will do our bidding in terms of who uh, who we go after in your country, if we have military bases in your country, um, and you play the game and we'll get along. And, and I think that to some that might be really simplified, but I also think uh, that we have that evidence that that's how it works. Robert Gucci there, an associate professor at Lancaster University and a specialist in U.S. foreign policy. Thanks so much for sharing your expertise and your thoughts with us on Al Jazeera, sir. Thank you. Well,